You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get out, get the point. Good. And now... Fendo. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey there, hi there, ho there, everybody. And how are you doing on this wacka, 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 wacka doodle Wednesday? It's a wee bit on the breezy side out here in Grammy land. Not as bad as yesterday. Yesterday sucked big time. I stayed in the house and made pickles. And pickles, and pickles, and oy, 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 oy. I got lots of bread and butter pickles, though. So, next time, or next batch, because I have another batch of cucumbers that i got to get ready for pickling, and they're going to be dill. But, I haven't decided on which recipe I want to use yet, so, that's why I did another batch of bread and butters. So, <clears throat> In any case, yay, it's Wednesday, wackadoodle Wednesday, and we got all kinds of shakedowns and breakdowns going on, and uh, some craziness going on on frickin' Twitter. Holy crap, Kavanaugh, who did you piss off, hon? Jeepers. I mean, really, you got two women now, <clears throat> and lots of apparently men that signed some kind of thing that said that they they believe her. Well, honey, it would be a lot more believable if you would have come forward with this before there was any kind of mention of him um, running or being up for a nomination of anything. You know, like, oh, years ago, possibly, like when the statute of limitations hadn't run out yet, but ah, call me crazy, you know, I've been down that road, sweetheart, and I've actually done the whole court thing and everything, it's not fun, it totally sucks, you'd be surprised how many interesting names they can get away with calling you in a court, (laughs) but you gotta stand up for yourself honey and you gotta do it at the time you know it's kinda like reprimanding a dog if you don't reprimand them for shitting on the carpet right away they're not gonna know what the hell you're yelling at them about so you know it's one of them their things darling and uh, yeah I'm gonna get into that here in a little bit but first I wanna say hey to everybody let's see where do I wanna start I think I'll start over here on realliberty.org I see Grimmies over here and thank you Grim for letting everybody know that yay I am live and I'm I'm gonna be ranting tonight I have a funny feeling I have a feeling in my bones or in my doodle God only knows what that is but I think I whacked it (laughs) earlier today it's got a bruise Hi, Bobby Bain. I also see Bob Renner and Rob Works and Grimmy over here. And Cowboy was here just a wee bit ago, as well as the lovely Terry and Miri B. And Jim's Lighthouse has been posting music like crazy over here. Awesome sauce, Jim. Thank you ever so much. Now, over here on Mines, you know, I didn't. It's been a week, and I just really haven't. Yeah. <clears throat> what? Oh, good Lord. Man, that's somebody snorting powdered sugar off of donuts. <laughs> Not that I'm saying I've never done that. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, okay. Oh, hey, look at this. Everything awful going on in this world can be usually be traced back to these two pricks, Rothschild and Soros. Yeah, well, you know, they're just the ones that throw out ideas. They're the idea men. You know, it's it's their grunts, their minions, their little followers that um, are actually doing the dirty deeds. So, yeah, call their asses out as well, why don't you? Um, I don't know if anybody's listening over on Minds, but hi, if you are, over here on this effing site, freedomsnetwork.com. As soon as it wakey wakeys, wakey wakey. Thank you, Grim, for letting everybody know that I am live over here as well. Grim's just the man, the goddamn man. 
He's so awesome, Sauce. A uh, full timeline list details of sexual assault allegations against Slick Willie. Wow. From 1969 to 2017. <coughs> yeah, that guy, Slick Willie, had his Willie Wanker out a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And yet nothing has happened to him. I know we can't use that same thing. You know, it's just like... I was thinking earlier today as I was painting fence. <laughs> Actually, it's a semi-clear uh, stain for the fence, but the fence hadn't hasn't been treated in like six or seven years now. So yeah, it's soaking this stuff up. So multiple coats just to get it to where it's yeah. In any case, while I was pondering, because you know that is kind of a brainless job. You can just sit there and just paint away no big deal and uh, your brain can wander wherever it wishes to go like oh look a butterfly I saw quite a few mon monarch butterflies today but in any case what I was pondering was you know all of this Kavanaugh shit I have no freaking clue if it happened or not I was not there I was not privy to said party or whatever the hell which excuse me if it's a college party somebody's going to have their dangly bits hanging out whether they be Tatas or the nether region. Someone's going to have dangly bits hanging out by the end of a college party. That's just the way it works. Even if they whip it out just to go pee. And if you are feeling sexually traumatized because you saw someone taking a leak, <laughs> damn girlfriend, I'm more concerned about you than... Yeah. If that... Wow. Okay. It's called biology. Yeah. In any case, I don't know if he did it. And quite frankly, he didn't do anything to me. And I know this is going to sound really chicken shit. He didn't do anything to me. So, and I wasn't there to witness it. So it's like, it's is it really my business? I'm just asking. But on the other hand, and I also say, you know, um, Whatever happened to this presumption of innocent until proven guilty, you know, instead of the witch hunt we got going on right now, <sighs> all them people jumping on that bandwagon, you don't have enough instruments for that bandwagon, dear. In any case, I say this, and then I look at Slick Willie, and I think, you know, if I say you have to presume innocence until proven guilty, and I just absolutely hate that thought that I have to cut him a little bit of slack even though yeah I wasn't in the room I did not ex I did not experience nor did I witness any of his acts and yet one look at that creeper and yeah yeah he just freaking creeps me out it's just all there is to it he has a way of looking at people that is like got this it's this hungry lecherous kind of look and it just freaking ugh, ugh. in any case either one of them you know what if if this happened between you two deal with it deal with it at the time don't be dragging it out 40 years later and saying but but he showed his wee willy winky when I was at a party and I feel off ended now Really, it took you 40 years to finally get that? Are you kind of like a dinosaur? Takes forever for that to get from the tail to the head? Jeez. I know. It's going to be one of those nights. Freaking wackadoodles are everywhere. And over here on Fakey Book, I see my brother Fudd is over here. And he just shared moder uh, from Candace Owens, Modern feminism has never been about equality with men. It has always been about special treatment and exemption from all responsibility. It's my body. I can do with it what I want. If I want to go bump uglies with somebody and then go and get myself vacuumed out every time I bump uglies with somebody, it's my body. I don't have to take responsibility for any of my actions. That's just one of the ways. It's my choice. Yeah. Deal with the repercussions, darling. In any case, <clears throat> She goes on to say, many condemned me for being one of the first to speak out against the Me Too crowd. Now its toxicity is on full display, and yes it is. 
Yes, it is. I also saw something earlier about some gal over in, uh, was it St. Petersburg over in Russia? Apparently was off-ended by gentlemen sitting on the subway train the way gentlemen do, usually with their legs spread. And uh, so she decided to take diluted down bleach and pour it in their crotch. Wow, because she was off-ended and that's disgusting. Well, sweetheart, <laughs> what you were doing is assault. So which is worse? You know, you can't turn your head. You can't close your eyes. You can't stop staring. Hmm? Instead, you must pour diluted down bleach on their crotch. I'm thinking that I know who has the problem here. And there's probably going to be quite a few people that call my ass out on that one, too. And you know what? I don't care. I don't see you here doing this shit. Just saying. Stick your money where your mouth is. Or put yourself out there. And just let people know, hey, you know what? This is what I think about all this nonsense. And that's what it is. It is non-sense, as in lacking thereof, of any kind of sense. That's what it is. So, fake you book, Freedom's Network, Minds, Real Liberty. I guess it's time for me to go over to RLM and say hey to everybody over there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Fud, how you doing? Uh, let's see. Dun, 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 dun. Six FBI investigations for previous judgeship nominations. Wow. Um, yeah, you know she should she should have reported that shit right away. That's the only way you can deal with that stuff. It really is. You know, so deal with it at the time, whiners. In any case, over here on reallibertymedia.com, right up top, we have Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world, closely followed by Cowboy Tech, who is always hearing pleasant voices. Please don't change your hearing aids, honey. I also see Grimner, the RLM god, is here, as well as the lovely Moose Girl. And looky there, there is the lovely Kate as well from down in the great state of Florida. Uh, Phantom also shows in the chat. <clears throat> what was this? Oh, what an ass much. Thanks, Rob. In any case, uh, Asmo is here as well as the lovely Beth Z and Chloe. Hey, we got a double dip of Chloe going on. Chal Sedoni is also here as well as Colfax 101, Cyborg Noodle, that f um, flying spaghetti monster appendage. May you be touched by his noodly goodness. I also see D underscore C as well as Dakota Frumpy 4. Oh my god, we got multiplicity going on again with Frumpy. Fud! My what a fud. Hi, fud. <laughs> I'm here as well as Gromit. IBDC is here as well as Java, 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 Doctor 2. I also see JJ's, no, 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 JJ's, as well as Juana Taco. You know, that sounds yummy, but I'm not real sure what I'm going to have for supper yet. I, we're going out to uh, the Winona Cafe, and I, I like trying something different every time I go because it's wonderful food, and it's just a nice little bump on the side of the road but hey it's wonderful it's wonderful i also see kozu got a double dip in a kozu going on as well as layer eight and looky there meister brower hey woody um oh you can't answer me because you're a lonely male and therefore lacking the necess necessary sensitivity to grace you oh well thank you fud for yeah going all wishy-washy <laughs> <laughs> I know better than that. You can smart ass with the best of them, brada. You are the eldest, after all. You taught the rest of us. I also see Moy 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 is here. Um. <laughs> yes, he was, Rob, because I called out his name. Therefore, I acknowledged his existence, so therefore he was allowed to speak. Doesn't mean I have to listen. <laughs> 
Oh, moy, 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 moy. We got four poxes in the chit chat tonight. Pox box, poxified, poxophone, and poxy home. Also got some pompo, pompo, pond sauce going on, as well as the lovely rain. RLM Fluke, the Vanna White of the RLM channel, is here, as well as Rob Works. Rob, honey, may I ask if you would please fire up the bubbler? Please and thank you. I also see Sock Puppet. Hi, Sock. I sent you a message. Just want to let you know he has not gotten back with me. I sent him another text to ask, you know, what's going on with that, if it is a no longer serviced individually part or what. So as soon as I find out, I'll let you know, hon. I also see Skittle is here, the F Bominator. Skittle. Oh, you gagged a little on that. <laughs> Oops, I'm sorry. Not. And looky there to round out the crew. The one, the only, the Vin E. Yay, Vinny. Okay. Now I'm going to come over here and I'm going to check this one out because I saw it on Twitter and I thought, oh, this looks interesting. I may just have to go there. And so I did because I like these, I like these gals, their YouTube videos. The ones that I've seen at least. I don't know if they're still on YouTube because, you know, the purge and all that shit. But from diamondandsilk.com. <clears throat> Second Kavanaugh accuser is now refusing to testify. Apparently the second that piece in the New Yorker accusing Kavanaugh of sexual assault came out, it was clear that it wasn't going to hold up to scrutiny. The accuser wasn't even um, sure Kavanaugh was the guy until she talked to lawyers for six days about it. No one confirmed Kavanaugh was at the party. No eyewitness backed up the accuser's story. In fact, some of the people in the piece denied the story and suggested she was making it up for political gain. Once again, I say to you, if you have an issue with someone, if something like this has occurred to you, report it right away. Say something right away. Don't wait. Do something right away. That way it's tended to, it's over with, and you can move on with your life. Now, apparently the accuser's best friend had no idea what she was talking about. It was a disgrace to journalism. It should never have been published. Actually, hon, it probably shouldn't have been published, but I'm glad they did because now I can see the extent to which they will go to pile onto that bandwagon with their little witch hunt thing. wonder if they've got kazoos on that wagon. I'm curious now. But it was published because the liberal left has pulled out all the stops in order to prevent another conservative from being put on the bench. You know, it used to be, at least in sports, if you got put on the bench, that was not a good thing. So getting put on this bench is a good thing. I'm I, I'm a little I'm confused about this. Now it looks like Deborah Ramirez, the woman who accused Kavanaugh in the New York piece, is refusing to testify. Here's an excerpt from the Washington Examiner. <clears throat> Deborah Ramirez, <clears throat> excuse me, a Yale University classmate of Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh, is refusing to talk to the Senate Judiciary Committee about her accusation against Kavanaugh. A GOP lawmaker said this on Tuesday. Senator John Kennedy, Republican of Louisiana, who sits on the committee, said a lawyer for Ramirez told the committee staff she would not speak to them about her allegation that Kavanaugh flashed his naked groin in her face during an alcohol-laden party their freshman year. Once again, what did I say earlier? Especially freshmen. Holy mackinoli. Apparently, Ramirez made the accusation in a blockbuster Sunday night, night New Yorker story. Honey, I, I understand it doesn't make it right. You know, I actually have a meme that says, um, religion is like a penis. It's all well and good for you to be proud that you have one. But when you start waving it in my face, we're going to have a problem. Now, if he waved it in your face, you should have just whacked the little tally whacker and he would have gone wee 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 all the way home. But since you're bringing it up, how many years later? I'm thinking, mm, 
just so many sour grapes, as in pucker power sour grapes. Apparently, our counsel repeatedly tried to reach him, Kennedy said, of the Ramirez lawyer, and they finally did reach him, and he said that we are not issuing a statement. He said, if you want our statement, read the New Yorker. Well, that's going to be something that'll be admissible in court, I'm sure. Uh-huh. So, there you have it. Ramirez is not eager to testify. She's not eager to back up her story. She's not even eager to tell the American people the whole truth and faith questioning. Or, it says faith questioning, but I'm thinking that should be face. So, this is very clearly a smear from the very beginning. Now, if she showed up, she'd be put under oath and asked tough questions. And clearly, that's not something she's prepared to do. So, it's time for Republicans in the Senate to take a stand, which is something they don't do very often. And it doesn't look like the first accuser is going to show up either. What a circus this is, which, yes, it is. Bread and circus, smoke and mirrors, pretty much all you need to say. Ah, okay. Sock, if you're listening, hon, he's checking. So, yay! He just needed a little prodding. Okay, so I'm going to come over here to my... Oh, I probably ought to share that with y'all. I do like diamond and silk, though. They're funny. They're sassy. I don't always agree with them, but they are funny and sassy. Thank you, Rob Works, for firing up the bubbler and passing it around. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the same Soros who gives Trump loans gave Kavanaugh's accusers a fellowship. <gasps> Egad! Oh, the humanities! Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm going to go back to my pocket because this is, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the recommended in, uh, yeah. <clears throat> on my pocket and I'm not kidding you this is the very first one so we're gonna go here just because I think a lot of the stuff that's going on in DC right now well actually it's been pretty prevalent in DC for oh decades if not centuries and yet and yet it seems to be getting worse I think they need to see someone about that now, this is from wellandgood.com. We need to talk about farts and what happens when you hold them in. Now, this is from September 11th of this year. I know I have done another one along these lines, but I thought, oh, how appropriate. So, just like everyone poops, everyone farts. It's a totally natural occurrence. Even the most popular and well-mannered ladies can't help but unleash on the rag. Yeah, it's called, excuse me, I had the vapors. Yeah, they're lo apparently they're looking at Queen Elizabeth right now. So, mm. yeah, that's why she looks that way, because she keeps holding them in. Then she does that one-cheek sneak, and then she blames it on someone else. But... If you ever hold one in while you're out in public to avoid the embarrassment of, well, you know, everyone knowing that you pass gas, well, prepare to be seriously grossed out about what happens when you don't allow that air to properly exit. First things first, what exactly is a fart? Well, it's an intestinal kiss being blown at you. Oh, no, that's not what they say. According to the Cleveland Clinic, gas is simply the product of harmless bacteria in your intestines pro produced as your food is being digested. And if you're considerably more gassy after eating certain things, that's normal too. Now, some foods like beans and cabbage and Brussels sprouts and broccoli and whole grains cause more gas than others. Whether you even realize it or not, the typical person passes gas 14 to 23 times a day. I'm not going to tell you where I'm at in that equation. <laughs> so as all that gas builds up, it's got to escape somehow. 
Holding it in is only going to make you feel even more uncomfortable to, due to the buildup of additional pressure. Hmm. The gas will be reabsorbed through your gut and recirculated until it's expelled from your lungs via your breath. Yes, that means you're essentially exhaling a fart right out of your mouth. <laughs> so, according to Newsweek, that buildup leads to two different scenarios, neither of which are very pleasing. In one... The air will exit your body through a totally uncomfortable or uncontrollable fart. And the other is via your breath. Butt breath. So, to ensure that your body doesn't unle unleash a fart without your consent or decide to send it up and out of the other end, just try to find a safe space. See, that's what safe spaces are for. Now I know. To release that gas right when you feel the urge so you're not living in fear of the consequences. And if there's no escape and you do fart in public, just know everyone's been there. Because whether you're in yoga class, at the grocery store, or on an airplane, gas waits for nobody. So, there you go. Don't hold it in. It's not good for you. You wind up turning into a politician because if you even hold it in with your breath, it goes to your brain. And then you have shit for brains. So, yeah, it's not cool. Um... <laughs> Go on, Frumpy. I'm glad you're all about free breathing. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. I suppose I probably ought to put a couple of these over in the uh, realliberty.org one as well, you think? Because, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of slackering. I'm slackering. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Over there on realliberty.org, where you need to be. Seriously, it is lots of fun. There's cool people over there. Go check it out. It's like Fakie Book, only totally not. <laughs> you know, we don't censor you. We make you live by what you post. You know, if you want to if you want to post something that infuriates people deal with their responses hi d Len landreno landrun landreno Len landreno hi d <laughs> over here on real liberty.org she just popped in and there's bobby bain again hi bobby okay oops Yes, I see the flasher going on. Um, did I? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Fud. I called you Frumpy. But are you Frumpy? Are you wearing sweats, Bretta? <laughs> and yes, our uh, our family can make it an Olympic event. Yeah. I still remember the family reunions when all of Dad's siblings were there. And yeah, Aunt Martha would make her infamous ham and beans. And then they would have farting contests way into the night. It, yeah, it was not safe if you weren't, you know, yeah. Usually wasn't safe to just come wandering in and go, Hi, how are you? Oh, I can tell. Something crawl inside of you and die. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Dun, dun, dun. Here's how. I'm, I'm moving along because I want to, let's see, 28 pieces of productivity advice that I stole from others. Oh, hey, I like that. 
Um, ooh, 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 I'm seeing so many things in my, in my recommended, so I gotta, I saved one and I'm going with this one. Pardon the interruption, but no, I will not. From medium.com, 28 pieces of productivity advice that I stole from others that made me successful. Ah, this is by Ryan Holiday, who's the best-selling author of Conspiracy, Ego is the Enemy, and The Obstacle is the Way. Ah, okay. So, like all people, I like to think I'm a productive person. If I am, however, it's because I've been ruthlessly efficient at one thing. Stealing secrets and methods from people a lot smarter than me. Ooh, I do that all the time. Some of them I throw right back at them because it's like, oh, no, I, I use that for a bit and it just don't work for me. But yeah. <clears throat> so in my career, I've had a, for, a fortune of coming in contact with best-selling authors, successful entrepreneurs, investors, and exec executives, and creative people. Some I didn't meet, but I found their thoughts in book form. So whether they knew it or not, I cased all of them and took from them what I thought were their best ideas on productivity. Now below are the secrets that I've learned from them, and thanks you guys, you helped me get more done and be more creative. Casey Neistat, whoever that is, um, apparently a popular YouTube filmmaker and artist, he picked up the trick of keeping a small moleskin journal that I write in every day. Thoughts, reminders, notes, lessons. I prefer one that can fit in my back pocket and this way I always have paper on me. The last few months I have been incredible or have been incredibly difficult and this journal helped me cope. More important, I learned how to keep track of these journals and everything else I own in case I lose them. In big letters, if found, please return to insert name and number. He also learned from Tim Ferriss. He learned the art of the to-do list. A simple, straightforward one. One note card, five to six big items, and that's it. Every day, I cross these off and tear up the card. That's it. That's the system. You know what I do? I use my phone for that. My notes. And every time I get something done, I delete it out of there. Or I also do my grocery list on there too. And so once I pick up whatever it is I'm needing, then it gets deleted off the list. That way I have my list with me instead of leaving it on the dining room table where it usually is when I go grocery shopping. From Robert Greene, the renowned author of 28 Laws of Power, he showed me how to cr he created books. His note card system has changed my life. Every book I read, I fold the pages, uh, or I fold the pages of, and then go back through and transfer the information onto note cards, which I then organize by theme in a card box. At this point, I have hundreds of thousands of these cards which I always turn to if I'm in need of an anecdote or a fact or inspiration or a strategy or a story or an example. Hmm, that is an interesting way to do it, but I don't, I don't want to have that damn many note cards. Sorry. Besides, you know, I've downloaded an awful lot of stuff onto my computer and, you know, memes and different quotes and that kind of stuff. And I go back to them occasionally and I weed through them and I look at them and I go, hmm, this one no longer works for me. You can have it back. And I delete it off my computer. How about Dov Charney, whoever that is. First time I called Dov, I got his voicemail and it said, I don't use voicemail, email me. This is a way better system. I've taken it a step further. I don't even have a voicemail set up. If it's important, they'll call back. If I have time, I'll return the missed call. Either way, having six unchecked voice messages is something I haven't worried about in years because they don't exist. And you know what? My mother doesn't have voicemail and she doesn't want to have voicemail. And actually on the little recording, because they make you do some kind of recording or whatever the hell, or they made her do it, and she said, on her recording when when it gets to that point 
It goes, what am I supposed to say? And then I hear my sister-in-law yelling in, don't leave a message. And then mom goes, don't leave a message. <laughs> I love it. I love it. How about Remit Sethi? Apparently, he has built a 40-plus employee multi-million dollar education business right before our eyes. Apparently, he and the author grew up in the same small town, actually. <clears throat> now, one trick that he learned from Remit after ignoring the advice several times is that if you're going to hire an assistant, make sure they are older or more responsible than you. Too many people make the mistake of hiring someone young and cheap, which is ridiculous because it's impossible for them to understand the value of time and organization and they will end up making you less productive, not more. If you're going to have an assistant, do it right. From Tobias Wolf in his book Old School, which was Tobias's semi-autobiographical um, it's char his character takes the time to type out quotes and passages from great books. I do this almost every weekend. It's made me A, a faster typer, and B, a much better writer, and C, a wiser person. I love trolling the quotes on the interwebs. You know, except for those Nostradamus ones, because, yeah, when he starts talking about the Internet and someone's going to make a meme about him and... Yeah, I just, I got to skip past those. I, I just don't, nah. As for Robert Greene, he also learned that swimming is a great productivity tool. Why? Because it requires total isolation, no music, no phone, no possible interruptions, just quiet, strenuous exercise. I've had some of the most productive brainstorming sessions in the pool. You know, I have those when I'm pulling weeds because I don't, I don't do the earbuds thing. I go out and I pull weeds or paint fence or whatever it is, but I don't have earbuds. I don't have music. I don't, I don't, don't even take my phone with me because I don't need that distraction. Uh, David Allen and Merlin Mann... Yeah, inbox zero, never touch paper twice. Let these phrases sink in and use them. Never touch paper twice. Hmm, what's that, Grimmy? Oh, you find stealing code to be far more efficient? Ah, yeah, you know, it would be a lot more efficient than, than having to go through the whole process of writing it yourself, especially if someone else has figured it out for you. Yeah. Um, uh, Fudd, the reason he only assaults Democratic women is because they're the only ones that can get so easily off-ended. Oh, was that not nice of me? Tough patooties. From Napoleon, he learned there's a great quote from Napoleon about how he could delay opening letters so that by the time he did, the unimportant issues would have resolved themselves. I try to do the same thing with email and issues from staff. You know, I am I am horrid about email. I think I check my email once a month. Seriously. I mean, if you really want to get a hold of me, if, if something is vitally important, call me. If you don't have my number, <laughs> oops. Because, yeah, my email, mm, nah. I'm horrible about checking it. And like I said, it's once a month. And then I do the little click this and then find all those like that and click the box and delete. <laughs> That's how I read email. So, from Marco Arment, Instapaper changed my life. I don't play games on my phone. I read smart articles that I queued up for myself earlier in the day. I don't get distracted with articles while I'm working at my desk because I can easily put them in the queue. See, that's what my pocket is for. And I don't play games on my phone either. It's a phone. Okay, I use it for texting and for calling. That's pretty much the... Ex uh, once in a while, I use it, the maps... And, and, okay, and I keep my grocery list on it. <laughs> a 
Okay, I use it for more than a phone. But, you know, a very, very, I don't, I don't like to surf the web with it. I don't like to do, you know, watching YouTube or any of that shit with it. It's like, it's a phone. It's a phone. That's predominantly what it gets used for. Talking back and forth with people. Whether in type or voice. Uh, from James Altucher. No is a powerful, productive word. He also wrote a book about it. We think we're obligated to say yes to everything. Then we wonder why we never have enough time. Learning to say no or no thank you will energize you and excite you. So use it as much as you can. I am learning the value of saying no. And I've been told you're not supposed to say no to your doggies. But my doggies, when I say no, they give me that look like I'm in trouble. <laughs> I don't have to say anything else. I don't, I don't have to remember special commands or any of that shit. It's just ah or no. And they just kind of go, oops, butt pucker mode. From Montang. He also learned the importance of keeping a commonplace book. So if something catches your eye, write it down. Record it somewhere. Use it later. Simple as that. From Andrew, Andrew Carnegie. He had a great line about being introduced to the broom at an early age. In other words, know even the most lowly tasks intimately. It doesn't mean you have to still do them, but you should know them. You should know the importance of them. By the way, speaking of brooms, I am wearing the shirt that my daughter made for me. A baseball sleeve t-shirt that says, Broom hair don't care, and it's got a witch riding on a broom. This is my Halloween costume this year. I'm dressing early. <laughs> Basically, I wanted to try it on, and it fits perfect. Um, from Aaron Ray. I know I'm squirreling through this one. Aaron Ray was my mentor in Hollywood. He's a hugely successful movie producer and manager, but I noticed one thing. He was never in the office, and he always had some ridiculous excuse why he wasn't. Eventually, I realized why. He was avoiding the office BS that sucks up most people's time. By staying away, he got way more done. He could see the big picture. And as an extra bonus, everyone was always talking about him. Where's Aaron? Has anyone seen Aaron? Ooh, so he's got all those vibes focused on him. Cool beans. From Tucker Max. You wouldn't guess it, but Tucker has the biggest library you've ever seen. Why? He buys every book he wants. I don't waste time thinking about what books I want or where to get them cheapest. I buy them. I read them. I recommend them. I benefit from them. End of story. I'm never without something to read and I'm always driven to read more because the shelves are looking down on me as a reminder of what I have left to do. I, ha I, mm, I don't buy them so much anymore, but I do have... Buku books, and I actually got a box of books from my mother last weekend. See, I don't have to buy books, because mother goes, here, you'll like this. <laughs> and I have learned to say no to my mother quite often. And yet she has this knack of finding something that I will say, oh, all right. <laughs> She's horrid. Um... From Nassim Taleb. So speaking of books, from Nassim, I learned about the anti-library. Don't just collect books you have read. Collect the books you haven't read. It's a testament to what you don't know and on a hand resource or and an on-hand resource whenever you need it. Oh, what an excellent idea, but I would need a whole nother building for that. From Samantha Hoover, his fiance, he got a nice little trick. Delete Facebook from your phone. Just do it. Trust me. 
Yeah. I never put Facebook on my phone or Messenger, and I won't. I don't want them on my phone. That is not what my phone is for. From Brian Birdman Williams. The guy founded Cash Money Records and is worth more than $500 million. I was shocked the first time I was supposed to meet him at the studio at 1 a.m. on a Sunday. His day was just starting. He works at night. Sleeps during the day. Like I said, at first it was weird, but then I realized he picked the hours that were most productive for him. Screw what most people think is normal. Well, normal is actually just a setting on the dryer and a town in Illinois that I have never been to. Another one from Tucker Max. Um, he's still listening to the same song over and over. Um, it lets you space out and get into the zone or flow state. My iTunes playlist is embarrassing, but I don't care. Listening to the same song hundreds of times is how I get so much done. I have a tendency to do that from time to time myself. And I have been scolded for it. And now I think, ha, ha, there you go. I feel much better about myself. From Samuel Zamuri, the entrepreneur behind United Fruit, um, he used to say, don't trust the report. We waste a lot of time trusting numbers and opinions we've never verified. Going backwards and doing something over ends up costing us far more than we save by skipping over the work in the first place. Well, yeah, a lot of reports, it's like, I have no idea how you gathered those numbers. I don't know what questions you asked, any of that other fun stuff. So sometimes I go with it, sometimes I don't. From Tim Ferriss, you don't have to be the first one to sign up for things. Wait a bit on the new apps and social networks. Wait for things to sort themselves out. Let other people do all the trial and error. Then when you come, just be the best. Yeah, that works for me. You know, it's also along the same lines of if you've seen someone make an error or do something totally stupid, learn from it so you don't have to redo what they just did for yourself in order for you to learn. Don't go there. Pay attention to their screw-up so you don't have to have the same screw-up. Now, there's an anonymous one here. He forgets who gave him the idea, but never buy in-flight Wi-Fi. Go off the grid for the whole flight. Catch up on stuff. Think and read. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't buy the... Yeah. I don't need to be in touch that bad. From Adam Carolla. Um, on Loveline, Adam used to complain about how the producers wanted him to get there 15 minutes before the show started. His refusal was simple. Every week that added up to an extra show for free. Important people can get a lot done in just 15 minutes. So they don't give it away easily. And they don't mind looking bad in order to protect it. Yeah, and you know what? Another thing along those lines, you know, when you go to a doctor's appointment and you're a little bit early and then when you finally get taken back there, you're considerably later than when your scheduled appointment was. Now, I understand with doctors, emergencies come up and all that shit, but I also understand how much BSing goes on. I used to work <laughs> in a dentist's office. I know how much BSing goes on. So... Your time is just as valuable as theirs is, and you need to express that to them. You know, if you're going to be running late like that, if you've got something that's come up, give me a heads up. I have other things that I could get tended to in that time frame, instead of sitting here watching the clock or watching The Price is Right on TV, because I've already read all of your magazines. From Nikki Papadopoulos. Apparently, his editor always says, okay, well, try writing it then. In other words, she means get started. 
She usually says this right after you explain some sweeping idea that you have for a book or a chapter or an article. So planning it out is great, but productive people get moving. From Frederick Douglass, a man is worked on by what he works on. So steer clear of quagmires, toxic work environments, busy work, and unsolvable problems. They will make you nuts. From James Altucker, I'm not sure how, if that's how you pronounce it, entrepreneurs and writers are nuts. To save yourself many wasted hours of time and insanity, find yourself a spouse who is, a, who is better adjusted and balanced than you. James and his wife, Claudia, are an inspiring example of this important pairing. <laughs> Obviously, she's the better half of that equation. <clears throat> From Aaron Ray. As a talent manager, Aaron showed me why you never waste your time or your own money. Doing your own negotiating. Yeah, you never do that. So this has served me well. I pass incoming inquiries on to a speaking agent or book projects to the book agent, interview requests to an assistant, movie and TV stuff to Aaron, etc., etc. Yes, this means I pay them a fee, but guess what? All valuable services have a cost. And only a fool represents himself or herself. Uh, I'm not real sure about that. Depends on where you're talking about. I may know more than someone else, at least about my own situation. So, if you like to read, he has created a list of 15 books you've never heard of that will alter your worldview and help you excel at your career. And there is a link to that list. So, some of those were actually quite inventive. I may have to steal a few of them or borrow for an extended period of time. How's that sound? Hootie doody body. Yes, all wars are illegal. Actually, Rob Works, I saw something on uh, Fakey Book, and I think it was Leo Tolstoy that said it, uh, or not Fakey Book, it was on Twitter, um, about those that are so enamored with war and think that war is the be-all, end-all, do-all of how to solve problems. Put them, all those people that have that belief system, put them all in one brigade, and that is the lead brigade. Uh, I think you are grim. Yes, I am yawning quite a, it's a lack of oxygen to the brain. I'm talking too fast and I am kind of tired. I've had a busy week. I'm already exhausted and it's only Wednesday and I still got appointments tomorrow and things to do Friday and things to do Saturday and yeah, it's a busy week. Busy, busy, busy. By the way, I told you guys I would tell you what my schedule is going to be with my work, my new, my new outside the house, which is only a part-time thing, and it's Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and every other Saturday I'm going to be away. So, just so as you know, in case anybody's trying to get a hold of me, uh, as if. But ooh, mental pancakes. What is that? Ah. A bunny with the pancake on its head. My bunny wabbit would not let that sit on her head. She would probably eat it. Because she's kind of a hungry, hungry little hippo. Okay. Oh, I really need to. Wow, maybe I should have had some coffee. <laughs> that probably would have helped. It's kind of chilly out here anyway. I should have made some coffee before I started. That would have woke my ass up. So, okay. There. Shared over here on realliberty.org. Flasher has been posting blogs like crazy. Don't drink the water. Yeah, well, you know, mine's well water. That doesn't necessarily mean it's better. 
although it does taste better than town water. But at least I don't have all those nasty things that they put in the water in town. Um, holy crap and holy. <laughs> <clears throat> Adamant Anarchy is getting ready to do something naughty to his block button over on Twitter. Okay, back to my pocket I go. Uh, ooh. Let's see. Here we go. From sciencealert.com. Y'all know I got to do this whole health thing. At least one health thing. Because I, I find these things fascinating. So, from sciencealert.com. The largest ever clinical study on vitamin D shows we're wrong about one of its main benefits. We have created another pseudo disease. Hmm. It's from September of this year. Excuse me. We are still in love with vitamins a century after they were discovered, with half the U.S. and U.K. population taking a supplement. Vitamin D, the sunshine vitamin, is the favorite and is believed to have the most proven benefits. Oh, here I go again. Wow. So, governments, including the U.K. government, have said that the evidence for vitamin D's health benefits is so overwhelming that every adult should take it as a supplement for at least six months of the year. Now, it was, the first it was first used to cure rickets in Victorian children living in urban poverty and is now routinely given to prevent and treat brittle bone disease or osteoporosis and fractures. It has been associated with a reduced risk of over 100 common diseases in observational studies ranging from depression to cancer. Now the largest ever clinical study on the benefits of vitamin D is pre in preventing fractures is now reported in the BMJ with over 500,000 people and around 188,000 fractures from 23 cohorts from many countries. Wow! That's a lot of fractures. So as vitamin D levels are strongly influenced by genes, the researchers use genetic markers for vitamin D blood levels, which is called uh, Mendelian... Okay, MR. We're just going to say MR because I can't say that second one. <laughs> I probably could, but I would totally befuddle it. And to avoid the normal biases of observational studies, such as confusing cause and consequence of disease and the effects of other related health behaviors, which is also called co or confounders. Now, the results showed no association between vitamin D levels over a lifetime and the risk of fracture. This latest study contradicts the UK government's recent view but not a host of earlier clinical trials. In 2014, a review of the meta-analysis of 31 vitamin D supplemental trials, they found no effect on all fractures. Much of our strong belief in the benefits of vitamin D came from the studies of supplements in care homes in the 1980s, which were never replicated and were probably flawed. Now, in more recent meta-analysis of 33 randomized trials of over 50,000 older adults, supplementation with calcium or vitamin D had no effect on the incidence of fractures. There were also no clear benefits on muscle strength or mobility. So, if all the data points to vitamin D failing to prevent fractures, why worry about all the people with low blood levels of the vitamin? Well, because vitamin D deficiency has become a modern epidemic with the fifth of the UK and US populations reported to have low levels. So will they be more susceptible to other diseases and cancer? 
Well, there's no consens consensus on deficiency. Of course, they're also only recommending lower and lower doses of vitamin D. But I probably shouldn't have said that because it's probably in this article somewhere down the road. <laughs> there is little agreement on what vitamin D deficiency is. Deficiency levels are arbitrary with no international consensus and confusion caused by different units in the U.S. Now, a normal level can vary from 50 to 80 nanomol, nanomol per liter of blood. But recent studies suggest 30 nanomol is quite enough. So they say... While clinical deficiency of less than 10 nanomol is often clear-cut, wrongly labeling millions of people as vitamin D deficient causes stress and over-medicalization, which, yeah, there's an awful lot of over-medicalization going on these days. Now, most people assume calcium and vitamin D are safe, and the more you take, the better. Now, my clinical practice changed when studies showed calcium supplements, as well as being ineffective against fractures, may cause heart disease. So the prescriptions are now dropping. Vitamin D is fat-soluble, so high levels can build up in the body. While recommendations for supplements are usually with modest doses of 10 micrograms to 400 international units, or IU, these will inevitably be overdone by some people taking other sources in cod liver oil tablets or in fortified milk or orange juice or bread. So more worrying, people are people increasingly buying high dose supplements of 4,000 and 200 or 20,000 IU on the internet. Uh, my doc, the last time I went to the doc, which a couple of years ago, said 4,000 IU was sufficient. And yeah, I mean, I get a lot of sunshine lately anyway, but I'm sure during the wintertime I will need to be taking some vitamin D supplements. Now, patients with a very high vitamin D levels of over 100 uh, in mole are becoming routine in my clinic and elsewhere and toxic overdoses are increasingly being reported. Several randomized trials shown that patients with high blood levels are taking large doses of vitamin D, which is above 800 IU, um, and had an unexpected increased risk of falls and fractures. So vitamin D is far from safe. It can no longer be recommended for use in other conditions. And the vast majority of the positive published studies in 137 diseases were reviewed as spurious. So it was widely believed that vitamin D supplements prevented cardiovascular disease, but meta-analysis and large-scale genetic MR studies have ruled this out. So, we've created another pseudo-disease that is encouraged by vitamin companies Pa uh, patient groups, food manufacturer, public health departments, and charities. Everyone likes to believe in a miracle vitamin pill and feels they are doing something. Vitamin D, despite its star status, would not be called a vitamin today as the doses needed are too large and the body can synthesize it from skin. And it is a steroid precursor. So instead of relying on this imposter, healthy people should get vitamin D from small doses of sunshine every day, as well as from food such as fish, oil, mushrooms, and dairy products. We should also trust that thousands of years of evolution would cope with a natural drop in vitamin D levels in winter without us snapping our limbs. About half of the population take vitamins daily despite zero benefits and with increasing evidence of harm. The worldwide trend of adding unregulated vitamins to processed food has now um, to be seriously questioned. That's not written well. That didn't sound right. Oh well. 
While vitamin D treatment still has a rare medical role in severe deficiency or those who are bed bound, the rest of us should avoid being treated with this steroid for the pseudo disease and focus on having a healthy lifestyle. Sunshine and importantly, save your money and energy on eating a rich diversity of real food. This is from Tim Spector, who is a professor of genetic epi epidemiology at King's College, London. So, I'm still probably going to take vitamin D in the wintertime, just because. Tim. Holy hooty ha do what a ha? Huh? Wow. Why are you doing that to cows, Skittle? What the hey? Um. Chloe, honey, lie detectors are not admissible in court, so why force him to take one? They're unreliable. You know, someone takes a lie detector and they go, I passed a lie detector test. Well, big whoop de doo to you. I know quite a few people that are quite good at lying. So passing a lie detector test doesn't mean doodly squat. And it is, you know, 40 years old. Sorry, but it is. Okay. Oh, crap. Shit, I got stutter fingers. Okay. Got that chaired. Now, I'm going to go to my home in my pocket because I just... I got a few things that I had put in there earlier. And this is one. Well, you know what? I just did the vitamin D, so let's do this one from the Natural Blaze as well. <clears throat> it's another health one. Uh, Naturalblaze.com. Is apple cider vinegar good for you? A doctor weighs in. This is by Gabrielle Neal, Texas A&M University. So, when my brother and I were kids back in the 80s, we loved going to Long John Silver's. But it wasn't just for the fish. It was for the vinegar, the malt vinegar. We would uncap a bottle at the table and swig that tangy, delicious nectar of the gods straight. Wow. Mm, I can't quite do that. Sorry. It was, um, so, probably there's quite a few people that are repulsed right now. I, I do a swig of apple cider vinegar every once in a while, but man, I couldn't just chug a lug it. Nope. So, some social media and online searches would have us believe that drinking vinegar is a cure-all. And our friends and colleagues will regale us with stories of the healing powers of apple cider vinegar for whatever problem we may have just mentioned. Oh, that backache from mowing? Vinegar! That last 10 pounds, vinegar will melt that right off. Syphilis again? Uh, you know it. Vinegar. Mm, no. <laughs> no. So, as a practicing physician, note practicing, they're still practicing, haven't perfected it yet. And a professor of medicine, people ask me about the benefits of drinking apple cider vinegar all the time. Now, I enjoy those moments because we can talk about the extensive history of vinegar and then distill the conversation to how it could, maybe, benefit them. Oh, yes, Miss Kate, I love Long John Silver's Hush Puppies. <laughs> that, that and the, the crumblies, <coughs> which you have to actually ask for those now. They used to, you know, it, you used to just get them, and then they started selling the crumbly separate, and it was like, bullshit, I ain't buying them. They're supposed to come with my fish. But yeah, I do love the hush puppies. Mmm. Okay. Oh, and Fud just left. Bye, Fud! 
Have an awesome evening. Give your lovely bride a hug for me. I don't know if you're listening or not anymore, but yeah, give her hugs. Okay, so a cure for colds, the plague, and obesity. Well, historically, vinegar has been used for many ailments. And a few examples are that of the famous Greek physician Hippocrates, who recommended vinegar for the treatment of cough and colds. And that of the Italian physician Tommaso del Garbo, who during the outbreak of plague in 1348 washed his hands, face, and mouth with vinegar in the hopes of preventing infection. Now, vinegar and water has been a refreshing drink, or drink from the time of Roman soldiers to modern athletes who drink it to slack their thirst. Ancient and modern cultures the world over have found good uses for sour wine. Now, while there's plenty of historical and an anecdotal testimony to the virtues of vinegar, what does medical research have to say on the subject of vinegar and health? I like vinegar. Now, the most reliable evidence for the health benefits of vinegar come from a few human studies involving apple cider vinegar. One study demonstrated that apple cider vinegar can improve after-meal uh, blood glucose glucose levels in insulin resistant subjects. Now in 11 people who were pre-diabetic, which, okay, I've got to put this out there. Everybody's pre-diabetic. You're either diabetic or you're pre-diabetic. It's just, this is a, my personal opinion, a bullshit thing. But 11 people who were pre-diabetic drinking 20 milliliters a little more than one tablespoon of apple cider vinegar lowered their blood sugar, sugar levels 30 to 60 minutes after eating more than a placebo did. That's good, but it was only demonstrated in 11 pre-diabetic people. Now another study on obese adults demonstrated a significant reduction in weight, fat mass, and triglycerides. Researchers selected 155 obese Japanese adults to ingest either 15 milliliter or about one tablespoon or 30 milliliter, which is a little more than two tablespoons of vinegar daily, or do a placebo drink, and followed their weight, fat mass, and triglycerides. In both the 15 milliliter and 30 milliliter group, researchers saw a reduction in all three markers. Now, while these studies need confirmation by larger studies, they are encouraging. Studies in animals, mostly rats, show that vinegar can potentially reduce blood pressure and abdominal fat cells. These help build, in, or these help build the case for follow-up studies in humans, but any benefit claims based on animal studies is premature. In all, the health benefits we suspect vinegar has, has need to be confirmed by larger human studies. And to this date, uh, certainly it will happen as researchers build on what has been studied in humans and animals so far. So, is there any harm in it? Well, not really, unless you're drinking excessive amounts of it. Duh, or drinking a high ac acetic acid concentration vinegar, such as distilled white vinegar used for cleaning. Um, consumable vinegar content is only 4 to 8%. Or rubbing it in your eyes, yeah, that would hurt. Or heating it in a lead vat, as the Romans did, to make it sweet. Yeah, very unhealthy. Also, don't heat any kind of food with lead vats. That's also very bad. So, you have your fish and chips and vinegar. It's not hurting you. It may not be doing you all the good that you're hoping it will. And it certainly is not a cure-all. But it is something that people all over the world will be enjoying with you. Now raise that bottle of malt vinegar with me and let's drink to our health. Well, I do like apple cider vinegar, and I use that with making my pickles. That and white vinegar. So.
tater tots. I do like tater tots too. But um, da -da. oh, and Clo uh, Kate, they do still have the crumbles that you just don't get that many, and I do think they are still selling them. But I ain't I ain't buying just a thing of crumbles. It's like, damn it, if I buy a family meal of fish, then damn it, I want my crumbles to go along with it. I like my crumbles. <laughs> I know it's not good for me, but tch. there's always something in this world that's not good for you. And if you don't go in excess... You know, or if it makes you violently ill, then stay away from it. But other than that, okay. Now, uh, um, let's go to this one. Science alert. Photosynthesis. Yay! Scientists just invented a more efficient way to turn sunlight into unlimited renewable fuel. We are improved, or we've improved on photosynthesis. This is also from just this month. So life has been soaking up sunlight and storing it as a fuel source for billions of years. But scientists have just put a few new twists on the ancient process that could finally provide us with the efficiency we need to compete with fossil fuels. A study led by the University of Cambridge in, in the UK has resulted in a better way to split water into hydrogen and oxygen by linking a photosynthesis pathway with an enzyme called hydrogenase. Hey, I said that without screwing up too awful bad. So while there's nothing new about breaking water apart to create a clean supply of energy, most, method, most methods to date have relied on expensive catalysts, making it a challenge to go economy size. Now this new process could change that. Photosynthesis is the rearrangement of water and carbon dioxide into glucose, locking up light energy for later use while releasing free oxygen. It's done a good job keeping plants, algae, and certain bacteria alive for a few billion years and is ultimately responsible for making the fossil fuels we now burn by the ton. But it's not overly efficient as far as energy capture processes go. After all, plants only need a few percent of the energy that rains down from the sky each day. And freeing that energy now stored as coal comes with the problem of also freeing all that carbon dioxide. Which, as we all know, has unleashed its own problems. No, it hasn't. The CO2 levels on the earth were a hell of a lot higher pre-industrial era. You got to go back a few thousand years, but CO2 is what the plants breathe, hun. Scientists have now invented a semi-artificial version of photosynthesis that improves on nature's formula, reactivating a long-abandoned process that evolution had left behind. The key is an en ancient enzyme known as hydrogenase. Now, it's an enzyme present in algae that is capable of reducing protons into hydrogen. That's from chemist and lead author Katarzyna. Uh, yeah, that's as far as I'm going with that one. Sorry, sweetheart, I butchered your name. So during evolution, this process has been deactivated because it wasn't necessary for survival but we successfully managed to bypass the inactivity to achieve the reaction we wanted. Splitting water into hydrogen and oxygen. Okay. So mimicking uh, photosynthesis in the name of collecting and storing energy is something scientists 
have been experimenting with for years. More than just a potential power source, it could also help mop up carbon dioxide in its traditional form. Unless you want to let the plants breathe it in, you know, stop cutting down the rainforests and let those plants inhale. Now, according to the Qatar, yeah, we'll just go with that. Most earlier technologies simply won't scale up to industrial levels, either because they're too expensive, inefficient, or use materials that pose their own risks as pollutants. Now, her team's approach has, was to create an electrochemical cell, not unlike a battery, based on the light-collecting biochemistry of the process called photosystem 2. Now, this provided the necessary voltage required for the hydrogen, hydrogenase enzyme to do its work, reducing the hydrogen in water so it can divorce from oxygen and bubble away as a gas. It sounds simple in principle, but connecting artificial systems with organic processes is anything but a walk in the park. Kind of like GMO food. It's anything but a walk in the park. This, is, uh, this work overcomes many difficult challenges associated with integration, excuse me, wow, of biological and organic components into inorganic materials for the assembly of semi-artificial devices and opens up a toolbox for developing future systems of solar energy conversion. That is from the laboratory head, Erwin Reisner. Now this process is unlikely to be the end point, with plenty more research to be done. Finding the right balance of natural materials and human intervention could be the ticket to inexpensive, truly clean solar energy. This could be a great platform for developing solar technologies. And the approach could be used to couple with other reactions or to couple other reactions together to see what can be done. Oh, let's, yeah, this is a hold my beer, watch this on a scientific level. Learn from these reactions and then build synthetic, more robust pieces of solar energy technology. Yay, that's scary. A hydrogen fuel economy is still some way off in the future, with other challenges to overcome in storage and transport, though researchers are making plenty of headway there as well. I don't know, do you necessarily need to have storage and transport? How about you just figure it out to where each, each mode of transportation or whatever has whatever is needed to do the photo, photosynthetic process to separate and make the fuel on site. Huh, it goes on to say, with our dependence on fossil fuels continuing to drive the global climate crisis, yeah, yeah, cheap, safe alternatives can't come soon enough. This was originally published in Nature Energy. And yeah, fossil fuels are dirty. Very dirty. And we need to move past that. But why are you guys stuck in this? We need to have a central hub. No, that means you need to have a control system. You do not need to have that. Okay. Yes, Goobrazilla brag, apple cider vinegar does need to be refrigerated after use. Be it will last longer, basically. I mean, if, if you have a, a dark, cool place that you keep it, it's okay. But, um, yeah, for the most part, keep it in the fridge. I keep mine in the fridge. It doesn't hurt anything. Um, so let me put this over on realliberty.org. Oh, mantle. That's a cool little, it's a cute, cool little cuppa. 
Okay. Hootie Doody Woody. Um, okay. Yeah, probably for the, yeah, nature invented it first. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, I know, Goob. Even before there was ever even money, nature had figured out, hey, and we got away from that, and that's that's the problem. We need to start paying attention to what nat nature does and stop all of this synthesizing crap. Mother Nature did it way better than we did. Because whenever we synthesize stuff, we have a tendency to uh, screw shit up. You know, we don't think about the uh, unintended consequences, if you will. Okay, I got to go to this one. I saw it last week and it was like, are you kidding me? No, we're not. This is wackadoodle. This is wackadoodle. <coughs> From uh, usatoday.com. Apparently, saving pets without a permit, mm, a good Samaritan got arrested after helping animals survive Florence. Yes. Oh, keep breathing heavy. <sighs> <laughs> oh. Hmm. Oh, millennials are killing divorce too. Really? Dude. So, as Hurricane Florence barreled toward the Carolina coast, Tammy Hedges took action to protect pets that might have otherwise been caught in the storm. It was a decision that led to her arrest. Hedges, who is a resident of Wayne County, North Carolina, uh, was taken into custody Friday after providing care to more than two dozen animals, 17 cats and 10 dogs, and this was four owners who had to evacuate before the storm hit. Now the owners got to evacuate, they got to save themselves, but who's going to save those animals? That's what we did, Hedges said, we saved them. Now, the owner of Crazy Claws and Paws, which is a donation-based animal rescue center, was in the process of converting a warehouse space into a proper animal shelter when she decided to use the building to help keep pets dry. However, her facility was not legally registered as a shelter. It's not legal. You didn't pay us for all those registrations. And you didn't fill out all those forms. And you didn't do the yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. So, our mission was to save as many animals from the flood as we could, Hedges said. And we went through Hurricane Matthew, Matthew and it was horrible. There were many preventable deaths. She said an elderly couple dropped off 18 of the animals, some of which were sick and injured just before the storm. And on Monday, after Florence passed, Hedges got a call from Wayne County Animal Control regarding the animals. He basically told me, you can voluntarily hand over the animals, or I can go and get a warrant. Well, she willingly surrendered the animals, and a few days later, they called me in for questioning. And yesterday, they arrested me. The charges include 12 counts of practicing medicine without a veterinary license. The nonprofit updated on their Facebook status to uh, break down the charges. One count of administering amoxicillin to Big Mama. One count of administering tramadol to Big Mama. Three counts of administering amoxicillin to a white Siamese cat. Three counts of administra administering a topical antibiotic ointment. Yeah, triple antibiotic from Dollar Tree to a white Siamese cat. Three counts of administering amoxicillin to a cat known as Sweet Pea. One count of administering amoxicillin to an unnamed black kitten. And one count of solicitation to commit a crime. It was all over-the-counter stuff you could literally find at Dollar Tree, said Raina uh, 
Neralim, who is 24, and an animal rescue volunteer who started a crowdfunding campaign for Hedges to help cover legal fees. She couldn't get the animals to the vet because the vet was closed. All the charges are bogus. So just days before the good deed went punished, the unregistered shelter was seeking volunteers to help care for um, the rescue animals. Please share this for anyone in the Wayne or in the Wayne County or nearby areas that may need a place to stay or be able to help. And if they have a pet or need some place to go or just like animals and are in need of a place to stay, we'd love to help them in exchange for their overnight help. Um, that was posted on Facebook. Now, one of the volunteers, Kathy Davidson, said that she was shocked and saddened when Animal Control showed up to take the pets. Of course, this whole situation is unbelievable, Davidson said. The animals seized were to be returned to their owners after the storm. Instead, she said that Animal Control has the pets. And if they can't find the owners, the pets went from a safe place to a kill shelter. Now, the county issued a statement about the incident. Wayne County Animal Services turned the case over to the Wayne County District Attorney's Office based on suspicion of practicing veterinary medicine without a license and presence of controlled substances. Ms. Hedges is considered innocent until proven guilty. Now, the office said that all the animals that were surrendered were checked out by a licensed veterinarian and that it is working to reunite them with their owners. So, this gal saved a bunch of critters. The vet was closed, so she couldn't get them to the vet. So now the vet is taking punitive action against her via the Wayne County District Attorney's Office because the vet couldn't charge people for housing their critters during the storm. That's the way it looks to me. We have a Dollar General out here. So, um, dun, dun, dun. yeah, it's just, it's a bunch of crap as far as I'm concerned. What's that? <gasps> Yay! Yay! Charges dropped against her. Yay! Thank you, Miss Kate. I'm going to have to go there. Thank you, Kate. Oops, and I will just cover that, actually, if I can get this to post over here on realliberty.org. Okay. Post that and now Miss Kate sent this or posted this in the chat from myfox8.com charges dropped against North Carolina woman who ran Hurricane Florence animal shelter without permit it's about damn time when was this done today today took them long enough so, charges were dropped after a North Carolina woman was arrested for providing care for animals during Hurricane Florence without a permit. Yeah, she didn't pay the appropriate extortion fees. Tammy Hedges of Wayne County sheltered more than two dozen animals after their owners had to leave before the storm hit. The owners got to evacuate and they got to save themselves, but who's going to save those animals? That is what we did. Now, Tammy Hedges initially faced 12 counts of practicing medicine without a veterinary license, and officials reported Hedges gave medicine, including antibiotics and ointments, to the animals at her unregistered shelter. But the charges were dismissed on Tuesday. Last week, Wayne County Animal Services reached out to her, and Hedges voluntarily turned over the animals before she was arrested. 
Now, a veterinarian looked over the surrendered animals, according to WRAL, and several have since been returned to their owners. Wayne County District Attorney Matthew Delbridge said Hedge's actions put the animals' health at risk, but none of the animals were harmed. Oh, like having to ride out a freaking hurricane on Solo, locked in a house, or in a locked up in a pen or on a chain or wherever the hell they were that was not putting their health at risk but her going and saving them and putting them in a dry place and tending to any boo-boos with stuff from dollar general dollar tree wherever the hell over the counter stuff yeah that's bad juju she shouldn't have done that because that might have hurt those poor animals that might have drowned otherwise. Apparently, Delbridge dismissed the charges so that officials could focus their efforts on more serious crime. Yeah, that was not a crime, biatch. Delbridge added in a statement that the hedge or that hedges was previously reported for unauthorized practice of veterinary medicine. In this case, hedges was charged with soliciting a schedule for controlled substance but that charge was also dropped. What was the schedule for controlled substance? Biatch. A passion for and the love of animals is laudable, but does not excuse unnecessarily putting their health at risk when other safer resources are available. They were not available because the vet was closed. Asshole. That's according to the district attorney, by the way. And uh, this was especially true in light of Hedges taking advantage of a dire situation to solicit money and opioid nar narcotics from our generous and well-intentioned citizens. Really? Did she really solicit for money and, and opioid narcotics? Or are you just throwing that out there to be a douchebag? To make yourself feel better about puffing your chest, thumping your chest, and hauling her in for saving those critters. Now, Hedges owns Crazy Claws and Paws Rescue Center, which is volunteer and donation-based shelter, and was in the process of converting a warehouse into a proper shelter. But leading up to the hurricane, the animals were dropped off at her warehouse even though the facility was not registered as an official shelter. <sighs> I'm thinking over a vicious asshat. Yes, that's what I'm thinking. I, I'll go ahead and put that over here. Once again, thank you, Miss Kate, for sharing that. Over officious asshat and all. I'm going to go check out the pig. I want to see what happened this date in history. How about you? It's getting down to time. And yeah, I'm still yawning. So there. What you going to do about it? I don't know what to do. How do you stop from yawning? Except for not talking so fast. <laughs> and not breathing. Okay. Oh, good God. Dialogue. A two-way rhetorical street where your lane has been closed off, putting you on the receiving end of a libtard victim victimist or holy roller diatribe. Ah, well, thank you for that, Hambo. Um, another word of the day is regulator. It is a nanny state minion assigned to erect roadblocks or barriers between capitalists and marketplace enrichment. Or an over-officious asshat as well. So, now for their quotable quotes. A pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. The realist adjusts the sails. That's from William A. Ward. So, in their tasty tidbits section, the thought for the day, whatever you give a woman, she's going to multiply. 
If you give her sperm, she'll give you a baby. If you give her a house, she'll give you a home. If you give her groceries, she'll give you a meal. If you give her a smile, she'll give you her heart. She multiplies and enlarges what is given to her. So, if you give her any crap, you will receive a ton of shit. <laughs> I do like that. Um, in the reality check for the day, whatever you give a woman, she's not going to be thrilled. If you try to give sperm, she'll say, not tonight, I've got a headache. If you give her a house, she'll say, do you expect me to live in this dump? If you give her groceries, she'll say, cook that crap yourself. If you give her a smile, she'll say, what have you done this time? She can multiply and enlarge what is given to her if she's in the mood. So, if you give her crap, she'll keep your name and half your stuff and give the rest to her shyster. Hmm, I'm thinking that piggish dude sounds just a tad bit bitter. So, just saying. Um, ooh, from their interesting thoughts section. This looks interesting. 11 teens die each day because of texting while driving. Maybe it's time to raise the age of smartphone ownership to 21. Hey, it's a thought. If gun control laws actually worked, Chicago would be Mayberry. Hmm. Here's another one. The Second Amendment makes more women equal than the entire feminist movement. Yes, it does. How about this one? Legal gun owners have 300 million guns and probably a trillion rounds of ammo. Seriously, folks, if we were the problem, you'd know it. Apparently, recently, the number of guns that has has been estimated to be over twice that now. Um, oh, yeah, here's another interesting thought. When JFK was killed, nobody blamed the rifle. Or how about this one? The NRA murders zero people and receives zero dollars in government funds. Planned Parenthood kills 350,000 babies every year and receives 500 million dollars in tax dollars annually. How about this? I have no problem with vigorous background checks when it comes to firearms. While we're at it, let's do the same when it comes to immigration and voter ID. How about we do the same when it comes to Congress and Senate as well? Because what was it? $150 million has been spent now to settle sexual harassment claims against congressional and senatorial members? Huh? It sounds like the pot calling the kettle black to me. How about this one? You don't need a smoke detector. That's what the fire department is for. If you think that sounds stupid, now you know how I feel when someone says, you don't need a gun. Or how about this one? Folks keep talking about another civil war. One side knows how to shoot and has a trillion bullets. The other side has crying closets, safe spaces, therapy dogs, and is confused about which bathroom to use. Pretty much says it all right there. Now, this date in history. The 26th of September, 1968. Six years after the network introduced mountain folk to the city in the Beverly Hillbillies, CBS trots out Steve Bookham Dano McGarrett in Hawaii 5 This date in history, the 26th of September, 1969. Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. The Brady Bunch debuts on the boob tube. If only the fans of the goody-goody on-screen family knew about the off-screen slap and tickle. Well, we didn't talk about such things back then. Not in polite company. Although I'm not what one would consider polite, so it's okay. Go ahead, talk about it. And finally, this date in history, the 26th of September, 1986. 
primetime soap opera drama Dallas sets off a tidal wave when it jumps the shark by having Bobby Ewing return from the grave. It was all just a bad dream. And I'm thinking, wow. Talk about stupid. But, yeah, they got away with it. People watched it. I, I never watched Dallas. I never watched, uh, what was that other one? Dynasty. Yeah. I didn't watch any of that shit. I preferred, you know, like, um, Eureka or, um, uh, Northern Exposure, you know, goofy stuff like that. That was, that was kind of stuff I like to watch when I watched. So, um, come on over to PIGazette.com. Say hey to Hambo and Porkus. Don't tell them I sent you because good God, they'll run for cover. And let's see, I have about 12 minutes left. Where do I want to go next? I did see something about science fiction. Where did I see that in my pocket? Hmm. Probably in the recommended, and I probably don't have it there anymore. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's some silliness. Always leave them laughing. There you go. This is from BuzzFeed.com. Um, 22 jokes that any grammar nerd would appreciate. That's what? By she. Okay. Or how about this one? The past, the present, and the future walked into a bar. It was tense. But um bum bum The cannons are, rep are ready. Oh, no. The cannons be ready, Captain. Arr. Okay, I'm just going to have to go ahead and share this because they're visual. Damn it. Damn it. Although it is funny. Some of them are cute. Um, what's that? Oh, yeah. Guess who did? Yeah. That, that would have been Shitlery that did that. Yeah vile creature though she is. Uh, back to my pocket I go. Let's see. Oh, a pretend billionaire. What? Hmm. Okay. Here's a Warren Buffett thing. Let's go. Let, let's check this shit out. Just because. From finance.yahoo. Warren Buffett says every bubble is built on two words. It starts with sound premise. And then the price action takes over. Apparently on May 26th of 2010, Warren Buffett was interviewed by the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission, or FCIC, and in transcripts released in 2016, we see that the FCIC asked Buffett several questions regarding what he thought caused the housing and credit bubble, which eventually popped and pulled the economy into the worst recession since the Great Depression. Well, I can tell you what caused the housing bubble. Y'all, y'all nitwits in D.C. decided that everybody has a right to own a home. And you lowered the bar considerably so that people were out there purchasing homes that there is no way they should have been able to purchase that house. No freaking way. And, you know, that's going on right now still. There's a lot of houses in my hometown where very little furniture is in the house, but they got this big old fancy schmancy house. Yeah. Lax lending that and a false pumping up of the housing construction. And, oh, there's all kind of shit that went into that one. 
But this goes on to say, Brad Bondi, then the Deputy General Counsel of FCIC, asked Buffett, so what do you think it was? If you were to point to one of the single driving causes behind this bubble. And Buffett began his brilliant response by quoting his mentor, Benjamin Graham, who also literally wrote the book on security analysis. Now, Buffett said that Ben Graham made an observation 50 or so years ago that it really stuck in my mind, and now I've seen evidence of it. You can get a whole lot or get in a whole lot more trouble in investing with a sound premise than with a false premise. When you have a sound premise, you may also have this can't go wrong mentality. And when you add money to that equation, things quickly get out of hand. It happened in 1929 and in 2000. So, um, he offered the examples of a study that was published in 1924 that argued stocks always outperformed bonds. That became the underlying bulwark of the 29 bubble, Buffett said. So after a while, the original premise, which becomes sort of an impetus for what later turns out to be a bubble, is forgotten and the price action takes over. Again, you start with a sound premise, but when people see the numbers go up, they pile on. It's a monkey pile kind of thing. The internet is the same thing, Buffett said. The internet was going to change our lives, but it didn't mean that every company was worth $50 billion that could dream up a prospectus. And the price action becomes so important to people that it takes over, takes over their minds. And it happens over and over. It's a totally sound premise that houses will become more worth more over time because the dollar becomes worth less or worthless, according to Buffett. It isn't because, you know, construction costs go up. So it isn't because houses are so wonderful. It's because the dollar becomes worth less and that a house that was bought 40 years ago is worth more today than it was then. And since 60 or 67 percent of the people want to own their own home and because you can borrow money on it and you're dreaming of buying a home, if you really believe that houses are going to go up in value, you buy one as soon as you can. And that's a very sound premise. And that's how it starts. Soon the price action, or at some point, the price action takes over. And you want to buy three houses and five houses. And you want to buy it with nothing down. And you want to agree to payments that you can't make. And all of that sort of thing, because it doesn't make any difference. It's going to be worth more next year. And it's not just the home buyers. The lenders feel the same way. It really doesn't make a difference if it's a liar's loan or if you know what I mean. So something, um, because even if they have to take it over, it's going to be worth more next year. And once that gathers momentum and it gets reinforced by price action and the original premise is forgotten, which is what happened in 1929. The financial crisis triggered by the housing bubble was orders of magnitude worse than the past stock market crashes. The price action becomes so important to people that it takes over. It takes over their minds, and because housing was the largest single asset, around $22 trillion or something like that, not above household wealth of $50 trillion or $60 trillion or something like that in the United States. So such a huge asset, so understandable to the public, they might not understand stocks, they might not understand tulip bulbs, but they understood houses and they wanted to buy one. And they wanted to buy it anyway, and the financing. And you could leverage up to the sky. It created a bubble like we've never seen. 
Bubbles continue to be obvious only in hindsight, largely because something based on a sound premise surely couldn't be a bubble. Unfortunately, in the markets, a premise is sound until it isn't. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you have an absolutely splendiferous rest of your evening and tomorrow. I will be back on Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of the Rocket Chair. But until then, I guess I'm going to get the heck out of here. I hope y'all, you know, do whatever you do. Just don't hurt anybody in the interim, okay? Okay, and please remember, I truly do love you all, and I wish you all enough. Good night.